Well, if you've heard about pump and dump stocks, then you probably have a negative view of them, but they're actually not all that bad. I'm gonna teach you how to trade them and take advantage of these stocks that can make big gains in a short amount of time. Plus I'll do my regular market analysis and we'll look at the trade of the week on LIDR. So what is a pump and dump stock? Well, very simply, it's a stock that makes big price gains without any good reason for the stock to sustain those gains. In other words, they're kind of manipulated to the upside. Now, how it works is typically promoters will find a stock that has a low number of shares available to trade. We call that the float. So this is the number of shares in the public's hands available to buy and sell. So a low float stock in my mind is any stock with less than 50 million shares in the float. And you have some that have three or four million shares. Well, you can imagine that if a stock only has say 5 million shares available to trade and you can bring in, promote a number of investors to buy the stock, you know, maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand investors to really start buying the stock aggressively. You can push that stock up very quickly. It's just a supply and demand problem. If there's limited supply, in other words, a low float and strong demand, then the stock can go up quite quickly. Now, the way that these promoters work in this day and age is they're typically on social media. So Twitter is very popular. You could even have promoters on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, they will have email newsletters. They will have I mean, sometimes written newsletters, which is how it was when I started trading 25, 30 years ago. But nowadays it's mostly electronic. So you might have five influencers on Twitter who maybe each of them has a couple hundred thousand followers. They'll go out and accumulate a stock that has a low float. So they might each go out and buy 200,000 shares slowly over time. And now each of them has a couple hundred thousand shares. There's five of them. The stock may only have 3 million shares in the float of which they own a million. And so now they have a low float stock that if they collectively promote that stock, it'll go up very quickly. And so they might get some news or some rumors and then go on Twitter and say, you know, such and such biotech company is going to be releasing figures on uh, their FDA testing for a new drug. And I've heard the results are going to be good, which could be true. It could be a total lie. You never really know. And then that stock, because of the large following that these people have, will go up quickly. And the promoters, the influencers who have these shares that they bought cheap, then can sell into that strength. So, you know, if they bought the shares at an average price of 50 cents, and the stock goes from 50, 60 cents to $3 in a day, you can see the profit potential. And this is happening all the time. There are uh, these influencers who've been arrested for doing this. And then there are those who kind of walk a fine line between promoting and simply sharing their knowledge, if you will. Here's how you deal with it. First of all, pump and dumps are fantastic. I love them because these are the kind of stocks that I can trade in a relatively short amount of time, buy them now, sell them in a few hours, sometimes sell them in a few days. They make big gains. They also come down very quickly when the pump is over, then you get the dump. But if you understand what you're dealing with and you don't believe what people say, but instead follow what people do, then you can really benefit. So the key to trading a pump and dump is to first do two irrational things. First, look for stocks that have a low float and then start to move up quickly with abnormal volume. So that's the clue that it's being promoted. There may be very good reasons for it. It could be a rumor that they have found a new gold mine or a rumor that they have the cure for cancer or there's a new AI technology coming. There's always stories, right? Don't listen to stories. It doesn't matter. Listen to what people are doing with their money by watching market action. So if you see a stock that all of a sudden is up 15% for the day 
and is trading 10 times its normal volume, that's the clue that it's being pushed, right? It's being amped up. So that's when I like to buy that initial break from low volatility. As it moves higher, realize it's probably BS. It's probably going to be back down maybe in two days, maybe in two months. We never know how long it will take, but they almost always come back down again. That's hence the name, the pump and the dump. As long as you don't believe in the story, you won't be there for the dump because what I want you to do is sell the stock simply because the upward trend is broken. I'm going to show you an example in a moment. So if the stock is trending up and then it breaks the upward trend, sell it. And if you go on to say Twitter and you read the postings on this stock, you'll hear all kinds of wonderful things being said, usually by the promoters and their friends who push, push, push the story. And it's really easy to get sucked into the story and not listen to what the market activity is saying. So we always want to focus on buying stocks simply because they have the abnormal activity breaking from low volatility, especially if they have a low float and there's you know websites on the internet where you can find out what the float is. Just Google low float uh, for stock, something like that. And then second, don't believe what they're telling you. Don't believe anything you hear or read. Simply follow market action. So here's a stock that did this last week. I have no idea what the company does. I don't care, but I bought it and it started to behave abnormally there. And you can see the volume coming in was abnormal and it went up very quickly and went into this little upward sloping pattern where you had an upward trend line. And when that trend line was broken right here, that was your clue that it was probably going to start to move lower which is exactly what happened. And then the following day, it went down even a little bit more. Now, again, I don't know anything about what this company does. I just follow the market action. I'm there for the pump. I come in just one step behind the pumpers, right? Early in the trend. I'm not chasing the trend. That's dangerous. You just want to buy it when it starts to come alive. And then when the trend line is broken, when the cycle of rising bottoms are broken, it's time to get out. Now I'll show you another example of one of these from last week when we do the trade of the week at the end of the video. So stick around for that. But first, let's get into my analysis of the overall market. And we'll start with the S&P 500. This is the short term chart. And you can see that the bottoms are rising. So there's optimism in the short term, but you also had recent falling tops. So it's really kind of turning around in the short term from this bit of weakness. But let's take a look at the three year weekly chart to get that longer term picture. And there you can see that we've got strong resistance right here from those highs. And the real question is, are we going to break through this or are we going to get stuck at it again? I think most likely you will see the market get stuck there next week in the next two weeks. And so I don't see tremendous upside. Certainly it's possible that we could break out and continue the upward trend. But the action I've seen in the market over the last couple of weeks, Although we've seen some price gains this week in the indexes, the volume has been very light. And so there's not a lot of enthusiasm behind the buying. I think it's more the absence of sellers than it is strong buyers. And so I'm a little wary of that. So I want to be cautious, you know, it's sort of a neutral market. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100. And here's the daily chart. And you can see over the last two weeks, we've been moving up, but we're coming into this resistance zone where we'll likely get stuck. So again, sort of a neutral picture. If you look at the three year, you can see we're just underneath that resistance. Certainly we could break through and I would say there's a 30% chance of that. But until we do, I want to be fairly cautious. IWM, the small cap market, also making short term gains. You can see here on the one month chart, we have rising bottoms in place. Volume has been very light, but although it's been very light and most stocks aren't really doing much, Every day there's a couple stocks that are very hot and able to make moves. So I think you can still trade these small cap stocks. You just have to focus on alpha. Here is the uh, three year weekly chart. And what we can see is that there are rising bottoms on the chart, which means the buyers are in control, but there's also fairly strong resistance going back a couple of years at this level. And so we may 
see the market stall here. Canadian market looks a little different because, of course, it has a heavier influence from commodities, and commodities have been strong. Gold has been particularly strong, gold and silver. So you can see we're in an upward trend on the daily, and the Canadian market actually managed to break through resistance. Barely, like it went above it on Friday and then came back below, so it's really not a strong breakout. But it is knocking on the door of these all-time highs over from uh, 2022 before interest rates started to go up. And we just broke this little pullback this week. I think the Canadian market more likely to go higher than lower. Moving along, let's take a look at gold. And you can see the little break of the pullback there. Gold probably <coughs> likely to move higher in the near term. All right, let's take a look at oil, USO. A downward trend, you can see this a little more clearly on the short term chart. Trend is down, so in the short term, it's bearish. But in the longer term, it's more of a neutral chart. You still have rising bottoms. I think oil is going to come down to this trend line and bounce and then move back up towards horizontal resistance. So it's building a, a decent pattern longer term. Looking at the US dollar, if we look at the short term chart, you can see that it's stopped going up. It's more or less sideways now and maybe has the potential to roll over and see some profit taking, but I don't think we'll see that unless we get this upward trend line broken. So if we start to break down through this upward trend line, then maybe the US dollar will pull back, but it's still relatively bullish in the longer term. On the question of Bitcoin, which I know many of you like to follow, we're still in this cycle of falling tops. The market had this parabolic rise here. And anytime you get a parabolic rise, you usually come back to the linear trend line. And so I think we're working our way down toward that, at which point we probably bounce off of it. So we'll watch for that. But I would say be a little bit cautious in the short term because the trend is down. This is the short term intraday chart. And you can see the trend is down. I think there's probably a little bit more weakness to come before it stalls. Now, everyone's interested in interest rates, and this is the best chart for interest rates. This is the bond market. If the bond market's going down, that means interest rates are going up. And you can see that we are in this downward sloping channel. We hit the bottom of the channel last uh, or two weeks ago, and now we're bouncing up, but we still need to break the downward trend line from a rising bottom for us to get some sense that the market expects lower interest rates. They're just not there yet. And I think that'll be the catalyst for stocks. So this is a really important chart to watch. If you see the bond market start to rally and break that daily downward trend line, that should be supportive for stocks, particularly small cap stocks, because they're more interest rate sensitive. All right, so let's get into my ratings then. Large cap stocks in the US, bullish in the short term, long term neutral. NASDAQ not quite as strong. I think those tech stocks made such gains that they're still digesting those gains. So neutral on both time frames there. US small cap stocks bullish in the short term, long term neutral. Canadian stocks neutral, but short term they're actually bullish. I just worry a little bit that they're going to pull back as they're bumping up against that resistance zone. Gold, short term neutral, long term bullish. Oil, short term bearish, long term neutral. US dollar starting to see a little bit of weakness in the short term, so I've lowered my rating there to neutral. Bitcoin, short term bearish, long term neutral, and bonds, I've upped the short term rating to neutral because it does appear to be trying to bounce, but we still need to break that downward trend line, so long term bearish. All right, so let's go to the trade of the week now, and this is a stock that uh, we traded on my active live service at stockscores.com. You can learn more about that at my website, stockscores.com. But this was a day trade, kind of a pump and dump, low float stock. The stock I think has about 46 million shares outstanding. And it was trading very abnormally. It was trading hundreds of thousands of times. So it was basically turning its float over many times through the day because it was trading such a huge amount of volume. And these are the best stocks to trade. Now what you see on screen is something a little different from what I usually show. I've actually taken the rules of my strategy, uh, one particular strategy called intraday pullbacks, and I have coded them into TradeStation. So when I am watching the market through the day, I have the computer identifying the entry points as well as the sell points. And so what you see on screen 
is the computer doing this. I didn't draw these lines on there. That's all driven by the algorithms that I have had written for TradeStation. And what it shows is that there were two good setups on LIDR where you buy and sell. You don't listen to the story. I have no idea what this company does. Couldn't care less. Just trading the market action. And it was a lot of action on Friday. So the first entry was an intraday pullback right uh, here. And it made a strong move from that, moving up as much as seven times risk, but with a sell signal at five times risk. And then the second one was uh, through the lunch hour on the East Coast. And it made this big jump. You see this huge jump right here that's most likely uh, stops getting triggered. So either buy stops for breaking to new high or short sellers getting caught on the wrong side of this stock and having their stops triggered at the high of the day. So you had this big jump, which was wonderful. It uh, triggered the exit point at six times risk. So you got five on the first one, six on the second one for a total of 11 times risk on the day. If you're risking $100 per trade, that's $1,100. If you're risking $1,000 per trade, that's $11,000. And the beautiful thing about this stock is even though it's a low float stock, it was trading such big volume that you could take good sized positions in it. It would be easy to take a couple thousand dollars of risk on a trade like this because it was so actively traded. And these are the best types of stocks to trade. You get a few of them every week and I can help you find them. If you want to learn more about that, go to stock scores, go to the trader training area and there's information in there about the different things that we do. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this week's video, a little lesson on the pumps and the dumps. Have you ever been suckered into a pump or a dump or both? Let me know uh, in the comments what you have experienced and what you may have learned. If you've enjoyed this video, click on the like button. Please subscribe. I mean, the more people that subscribe, the more motivated I am to do these videos every week. It costs you nothing and hopefully the information is worth it. Have a great week in the market and trade well.